For centuries, probably even millennia, the many peoples of the Alps have celebrated a very particular Christmas tradition. Every 5th of December, the night before St. Nicholas Day, people dressed up as horrifying demonic creatures and ran through the streets, scaring children, adults, and the elderly alike. It was the Krampus March, a festive vestige of the good old pagan days. Unfortunately, toward the second half of the 20th century, as the world became more and more globalized, fewer and fewer people dressed up as Krampuses every year. In some towns, the tradition disappeared entirely, with the old guard who really enjoyed the Krampus March just going to neighboring villages. The forces of global culture, American culture, were eroding away these ancient traditions. They were no longer cool, they were outmoded, antiquated. It wasn't that people hated the Krampus March, some were probably even wishing for its return. It's just that none of the young people cared. All they seemed interested in were th their Game Boys and their music television, those cultural heathens. And then, starting in the late 2000s, the Krampus March suddenly returned. And it was glorious. All over the mountains, people dusted off their grandparents' old costumes, or made new ones. What had over the years in some places become a very formal, maybe a little bit silly event, once again became atmospheric, brutal, horrifying. Somehow, even though it was a very old tradition returning, it sort of felt new and fresh. Even the old guard, at this point too frail to participate themselves, were very much appreciating it. The millennials had revived this age-old tradition. This way oversimplified story isn't just something that happened in the Alps. It's been happening all over the Western world for the past couple of years, and a lot of people are very surprised by it. And whenever I try to explain to people that this is millennials trying to get back to their cultural roots, it sort of doesn't compute with people? Hang on, the millennials are supposed to be woke crybabies who think tradition is racist because tradition is racist. Which is, uh, you know, not true. Millennials love tradition, especially the kind of tradition that is regional. Think about this. A big part of the shared identity of the millennial generation is that each and every one of them is unique. They're not just different from the old people, they are also themselves unique and different from each other. I mean, ultimately, this sort of narrative still does lead to a lot of very similar people, but never has the meme itself of being different from each other and special and unique in a way that is different from your peers being so prevalent in a generation. Like the metal and hip-hop movements from the 80s were really just taking off the old uniforms and putting on new uniforms of your peers, of people who understood you and your struggle. Now in the age of the internet, millennials and especially Zoomers have friends all over the world, like actual real friends all over the world that they may never have met because their definition of friendship has changed to a bit. And the degree of things that they can identify themselves by has grown massively. So by engaging in local traditions, they can satisfy their deep inborn need to be part of their local community, while at the same time being more interesting and impressive to people outside of their community, which is just a different kind of tribe. You don't just run in one kind of social circle. And the regional nature of these traditions is actually very important as the specter of nationalism and like racial pride, all of those nice things from the past, it still looms darkly over the consciousness of our generation, while local patriotism is actually considered pretty okay. Although I do feel that maybe in the United States these things may be exactly the other way around, which is like very strange to me, and this may just be a very European development. I'm not actually certain about that. But Burger, what about the nuclear family and all the other important traditions that millennials are destroying with their acceptance of the LGBT ABC people and all that? Millennials don't like tradition. They wouldn't do that if they did. Yeah, well, it turns out that when we revive all traditions, we don't just straight up take them the way they were, but we reinvent them to fit them into our new cultural framework. No matter what silly articles written by failed journalists on Vox may have you believe, it is very much possible to remove traditions from their problematic context if you are able to acknowledge that context. 
and millennials do it all the time. We just don't do the part of the tradition where we pelter a black man with eggs. And we also don't get a designated Negro as you did in the 80s because that shit is still racist. And frankly, we have Gen X to thank for that. Their rejection of these old and dated traditions gave us an opportunity to approach them with a certain amount of distance that hadn't been there before. Thus allowing us to reinterpret them in ways that aren't traditional in the conservative sense, but in the interesting progressive sense. Respecting your cultural roots without beating your children. Because traditions do not survive through conservatism, they survive through adaptation. And through the power of the internet, we are actually getting to the point that we are reviving entirely dead traditions also. You know the kind of stuff that like some history major found in some book and then they post that to Tumblr or Reddit or whatever social media platform they like and then people take an interest in it and suddenly you have like small events of people celebrating a kind of cultural tradition that hasn't been celebrated in centuries. I mean, there is a reason why neo-paganism is on the rise not just in like right-wing communities, but also on the left. Interest communities of all kinds are international now. And because of that, no matter how obscure your interest is, you're gonna be able to find people who share it. However, there is another key factor in why we are looking to old traditions to identify ourselves by. And that is the fact that much of our generation's cultural experience has very few actual landmarks. Consider this, right? In the 80s, Generation X was basically drowning in cool new cultural movements and ideas. There are so many landmark pieces of culture from that decade alone that it's incredible. The 90s also had a lot of this, even though mostly what they were doing is trying to keep the 80s party going some more successfully than others. And then, the deeper we get into the 2000s, we enter a world where almost everything that is created is utterly referential. So on one side, you have sequels and prequels and reboots and homages and spiritual successes, and then, on the other hand, you have works that are so self-referential that you can only really understand them if you are in the zeitgeist of the era. Removed from the context of the people that first experienced them when they came out, these things will not hold up for long. And this trend just continues throughout the 2010s, even becoming more intense all the time. Think about this, right? I have a, I have a list here, right? So you have Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, comic book movies. It's all just things that started in the last millennium and now all the media that comes out is building on the success of that. I don't think that's like inherently a bad thing and it is ported for new audiences to enjoy, but maybe it's a bit much. Like most of the really iconic cultural landmarks of the millennial generation I like from the early 2000s. Later stuff, of course, is like legitimate continuation, like in the case of Game of Thrones, he just takes a long time writing those books, but they originated in the far past. And again, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a bad thing, but most of our culture rides on the back of old glory, and reinterpreting tradition is more familiar to us than creating something entirely novel. The very nature of memes as a form of cultural exchange is a microcosm of this. Sure, there have always been people who like to listen to old music, but to the extent that millennials do it, as I was scripting this video, I was just listening to old film scores by Piero Umiliani on Spotify. And that kind of access is something that hadn't even been possible for previous generations. We don't have to go to the record store and like dust off the old things, but maybe there's 20 of them in print. We just go on the internet type in the ancient song that we want to listen to, and we have it. Tradition has been in need of an update for a while now. A lot of old baggage needs to be shed, and a cultural foundation needs to be built so that future generations can focus on doing new stuff again. We need to rediscover and recontextualize the old so we can build a world that is ready for the new. Thank you very much for watching this pseudo-intellectual ramble like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, share this to your relevant communities, but do not spam them. Consider supporting me on a Patreon or Subscribestar, maybe buying some of my merchandise. 
or the uh, short story collection that I've written. Actually a novel cultural item because I like to do like new things, but I also like the old things. I suppose that's what being on the cusp between millennial and Gen Z is all about. And in that spirit, check out some of your interesting local traditions. There's probably some cool stuff that young people are engaging in that you will find interesting. And see you around, cunts.